with this video, we're going to play around mostly with this upper quadrant. We're going to play around with this blade and reveal what we can find in this area. We're going to start with a ball. You can use a tennis ball or any other massage type of ball. We're going to play around in this particular area. Okay. Then after that, we're going to play around the TheraBand as well as have two blocks handy. They don't have to be a wooden block. They can be a, um, a foam block is fine. And then we're going to use a roller. Okay. Does, you don't need, doesn't need to be this long. A half roller or a travel roller will do. Okay. So grab your ball and I'll meet you back on the mat. It's really interesting when it comes to utilizing a ball. And for me, I don't actually use the ball. So coming down to that medial border, but for me, I don't use the ball as a massage technique. I know there's lots of systems out there that enable that and talk about that. For me, it's more about awareness because what I don't want to have happen with my clients is them getting, getting into a fix it mode with the massage technique. I ultimately want people to be not having to use the ball. They become aware, the ball reveals what's going on there and then they can um, change up and retrain their neuromuscular patterns so that dysfunctional or limitation in their mechanics starts to change and then their, their tissue starts to change. So the aim really is to use the ball to reveal what's going on and from that, then retrains in the patterns. It becomes really cool. The other thing that becomes cool is people, especially up in the blade area, start to realize a correlation between their blade and their hip and their hamstrings and even their calves. It's very, very, very cool. Now, you might find that being on your back and putting the weight through this way is too much, so you can always go standing at the wall and do the same thing. The piece that I'm teaching right now is just come right up to the long, that medial border of the blade. Okay, good, and then come off. And just lie flat on your back and notice what you feel. And then from here, take your index finger and thumb tip together, bend the elbows, and start to move your arms wide. Now the articulating joint here is your shoulder. So you're not moving through the elbow. The elbow angle stays the same, but the arms are moving wide. So index finger and thumb tip are touching. Imagine you've got a thread between your fingers and pull that wide and then come back. And just be aware of your breathing. Be aware of yourself, where your brain is, and come back to your breath and your movement. Great. Okay, now from here, let's come on up, come into kneeling, and we will use the TheraBand. And from here, take that the arms wide. Now, oftentimes when people teach this, they'll say, hold your blades down. Because what they see in their students is their shoulders rise up. But really, if you're seeing the shoulders rise up in yourself, then you hold them down. You're just compensating in a new way. So think about just keeping the blades where they are. Keep the, the wrists neutral, because they can tend to do this. And just move the arms as far as you don't rise up. So find your pure movement here of those arms in the shoulder socket. Move it a range that doesn't increase pain or strain. And your position of your hands on the TheraBand in part depends on the color of TheraBand and the relative tension. You can bring them in narrower, but you'll see that it's harder to move, which is fine. You just need to choose the distance you want to go in the relative to the tension of that band. Okay, great. So now from here, grab your blocks. And you're going to take your fingers into the OK sing, 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 <laughs> symbol and then place your fingers alongside, like flush with the block, and you're going to move through the knuckle. So it's like you're going to be doing this through the knuckle, right, of the fingers right there. Where the fingers meet the forearm, where the, for, uh, where the fingers meet the, I'm having a good time with my language today, meet the palm of the hand. Okay, so. OK symbol, snug those fingers right up to the edge of the block and make that block a bit wider and now just move through that knuckle area. So interesting doing something like this. Okay, now we're going to go middle finger to thumb, 
so interesting to discover how the hands and the fingers relate to what's going on up in that blade. Now notice if you're increasing any tension up through here or in your neck as you do this, then can you do this in a range that doesn't do that? Okay, now ring finger. Let me slide that a bit wider and then pinky. Watch your breath and just see if it's gotten held at all while you're doing this. Sometimes when we're learning a new exercise, the breath can be held, but just notice, just notice as you move what's going on with that breathing in your ribcage. Lovely. Okay. Let that go. All right now, we're going to bring a roller in and we're going to come into a position like so. Now you might need to have a block underneath your your hips, you decide on whether you need to be up a little bit higher. The aim here is we're gonna take a twist and then the hands are gonna come onto the roller and we're just gonna move ourselves this direction. Now the idea here is that this hip is staying in the position that it's in. So if you need to be at a height because you're way off of your, way off of your hips, then do that. Or you can come into this twist here, like this. That might be a better option for you. Just keep yourself in tabletop and do an easy twist like that. Okay? So you choose and you choose what is what suits your body best, right? So I have total trust that you'll do that. And you take that twist here and then roll. So when I'm moving into the roll, I'm not letting any air come underneath my opposite, which is my left. I'm going to my right, my left um, sitting bone. Good. Sometimes I can feel like you need a little bit of WD-40. <laughs> All right, other side. Sometimes when I've increased weights and I'm lifting heavier weights, that can sometimes let me know that there's some refinement of my movement patterns that I need to do. I may have compensated a bit, particularly if I feel particular, if, particularly if I feel sticky. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then from there, come back into kneeling or sit on a block and then bring those arms wide again. Notice if you experience anything different or new. Raise the shoulders to your ears on the inhale. Exhale, blades pull back and then down. Up on the inhale. Exhale, blades back and then down. One more. Lovely. Perfect. So now notice what it is that you feel. And as you move into the next part of your day, whether it's a practice, whether it's a walk or a run, or meditation, notice what it is that you're feeling. We'll see you on the next video.